these are a lot to hold. And, um, your girl's not about to try to hold all these books and have them tumbling down later, because <laughs> that is not a fun time and we're not here to hurt books. We're here to talk about books and brag about what I got in the month of January. So, let's see what we got, shall we? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. In today's video, we are going to be doing a January book haul because like I said in the beginning, there's a lot of stack of books sitting right next to me that I want to gush about and this is the place to gush so without further ado let's just go ahead and uh, jump on into this book haul shall we now the first one I have that I'm going to talk about because it's easy to reach and we're going with it so there is that fun thing for you and it is Sleeping Beauties by Sullivan Newell and it's the book one of the Famous Files, and I believe I heard about April talking about this over on her channel, and it kind of sounds like like a Wi-Fi kind of science fiction book, if you will, and like I've been saying here recently, I want to try to get into more sci-fi, and it's a short book and I can find the other two to the series soon which I'm going to but let me give a description on what Sleeping Giants is all about. A girl named Rose is riding her new bike near, home, near her home in Deadwood, South Dakota when she falls through the earth and into a palm of a giant's metal hand. Seventeen years later, the mystery of the bizarre artifact remains unsolved, its organs, athletics, and purpose unknown. Rose Franklin, now a highly trained physicist, leads a top-secret team to determine to crack the hand's code while powerful forces with uncertain motives close in, demanding answers about the relic and what it portends for humanity. But once the pieces of the puzzle are in place, will the results prove to an uninstrument of lasting peace or a weapon of mass destruction? And that is Sleeping Beauty, or Sleeping Beauties, <laughs> Sleeping Giants, wrong book, right name, sort of. But it sounds super good, and I can't wait for when I get around to it. Throwing it on the bed, like, it's okay. Alright, the next book is book two in a series, and it's to the Kiss of Deception. So I have the second and the third book in the series. So whenever I get around to reading it, which I hope is very soon... Yeah, very soon. <laughs> and now, like I said, this is the second one, and I don't want to give too much away because I haven't read, like, the first one, but everything is different. Held captive in a barbarian kingdom of Venda, Leah and Rafi, I hope I'm saying these names right, if not, I apologize, that, have a little chance of escape. Desperate to save Leah's life, her erstwhile assassin, Cardian has told the Verdant Cosmere that she has a gift, and the Cosmere's interest in Leah is greater than anyone could have foreseen, and that's all I'm going to get to because it is the second book, and it's been around a little while. I'm just, of course, you know, late to the party because that's who we are. And then here is the third book, which is The Beauty of Darkness, and we'll give a little bit of into this one as well, but not too much for spoilers. Darkness was a beautiful thing. The kiss of a shadow, a caress as soft as moonlight. Leah had survived Venda, but 
also has great evil bent on the destruction of Morgan, and only Leah can stop it. Now that's all we're, like I said, all we're given the description for the third book and the second book to the series, because like I said, I haven't read the first one, but like, they sound so good. I don't know what I'm waiting on, but we'll get to them soon this year, I think. Throwing them on the bed. Alright. And the other genre that I kind of want to get more into is thrillers. And I really want to pick up The Whisper Man by Alex North. It sounds really good and very popular. So, if you leave the door half open, soon you'll hear the whisper spoken. After the sudden death of his wife, Tom Kennedy believes a fresh start will help him and his young son, Jake, heal. A new beginning, a new house, a new town, Feather Bank. But the town has a dark past. Twenty years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five residents until Frank Carter was finally caught. He was nicknamed the Whisper Man, for he would lure, lure his victims out by whispering at their windows at night. Just as Tom and Jake settle into their new home, a young boy vanishes. His disappearance bears an unnerving resemblance to Frank Carter's crimes, reigniting old rumors that he prayed with uncompliance. Now, detectives of Amanda Beck and Pete Wills must find the boy before it is too late. Even after, or even if that means Pete has to revisit his great foe in prison, the Whisper Man. And then Jake begins acting strangely. He hears a whispering at his window. That definitely sounds creepy and spooky, and we need it. Alright, the next book I'm going to talk about is another one of the mystery thrillers, and you kind of see the pattern going on here, right? Maybe for the little bit? And <laughs> that is The Chain by Adrian McKinsey, and of course the fun would ring. I'm going to turn that down. Anyway, like I was saying, this is The Chain by Adrian McKinty, and it sounded super good when I picked it up, so let me read the description for you of the fingers in my face. <laughs> Alright. The morning starts like any other. Rachel Kellen drops her daughter, Kylie, at the bus stop and heads into her day. But then a cell phone call from an unknown number changes everything. On the line is a woman informing Rachel that she has Kylie bounded and gagged in her back seat and the only way Rachel can, will ever see her again is if she pays a ransom and kidnaps another child. The caller is a mother herself, whose son has also been abducted, and if Rachel doesn't do exactly as she's told, the boy will die, and so will Kylie. Rachel is now part of the chain, a terrifying scheme that turns parents from victims into criminals and is making someone else very rich in the process. Rachel is an ordinary woman, but over the coming days, she will be pushed beyond ordinary limits. She will have to make impossible moral choices and do terrible things. The chain is ruthless, terrifying, and completely anonymous. The rules are simple. Find the money, find your victim, and then commit a horrible act you'd have to thought yourself incapable of of just 24 hours ago. What the masterminds behind the chain know is that parents will do anything for their children, but what, but what they don't know is that they 
have finally met their match. Rachel is smart, determined, and a survivor. Can she be the one to finally break the chain? Like, uh, it, it sounds interesting. Like, hmm, don't mess with the mother and her children. Like, just don't. Ah, oh, people. Alright, and then the next one we're going to talk about is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Shabowski. And he is also the author who wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Didn't read the book, but I watched the movie. I liked the movie. I didn't know it was a book until, like, you know, years later down the line. So I picked up this one to, you know, give it a go. So, <clears throat> Single mother Kate Reese is on the run, determined to improve life for herself and her son Christopher. She flees on an abusive relationship in the middle of the night with her child. Together they find themselves drawn to the tight-knit community of Millgrove, Pennsylvania. It's as far off the beaten track as the way they can get. Just one highway in, one highway out. At first, it seems like the perfect place to s finally settle down. And then Christopher vanishes. For six long days, no one can find him until Christopher emerges from the woods at the edge of town. Unharmed, but not unchanged. He returns with a voice in his head only he can hear. With a mission only he can complete. Build a treehouse in the woods by Christmas, or his mother and everyone in the town will never be the same again. And that's just... <laughs> only voices he can hear and, like, nobody else. Like, that's kind of creepy, but, like, we like it creepy. Just a little bit. And that is Imaginary Friend. As we're throwing all the books... These next one, two, three, these next three books I got at a library sale, and they sounded good, and like, they were for 10 cents at the library, so you know, if they sound good, I'm gonna get them. They might be older books, but you know what? That's okay. And the first one that I got was A Court of Fives by Kate Elliott, World Fantasy Award finalist. And it just sounded super good. How do you choose between your passion and the people you love? Like, yes. One of the five courts, everyone is equal and everyone is dangerous. Jessamy's life is a balance between acting like an upper class pa patron and dreaming of the freedom of the commoners. But away from her family, she can be whomever she wants when she sneaks out to train for the fives. An actorate, multi-level athlete competition that offers a chance for glory to the kingdom's best contenders. And then just meets Calicors and an unprobable friendship between the two fives competitors, one of a mixed race and the other a patrician boy. Causes heads to turn. When Cal's powerful scheming uncle tears Jess's family apart, she'll have to test her new friend's loyalty and risk the vengeance of a royal clan to save her mother and sisters from certain death. In this imaginative escape into enthralling new lands, a world fantasy award finalist Kate Elliott's first young adult novel weaves an epic story of a girl struggling to do what she loves in society suffocated by the rules of a class and privilege and that is court of fives and like i said it sounded really good so i picked it up the other book i picked up also from the library because you know again 10 cents we love that. And that is A Lark Rising by Sandra Wall. We think. 
That's what we're gonna go with. Life, death, dark, light. One guardian for each to fight the coming chaos. In a castle in the hills of Terenx lie the four ambulance of balance. When enemies steal the ambulance, four guardians must be awakened to seek them out and return them. Lark the guardian of life is the first to be summoned. Like, that sounds good. And she's like, look at all the, like, the roses like in with that. It kind of reminds me of Court of Roses and Thorns. I know I said that backwards or kind of wrong, but I think you guys know what I mean. I hope. If not, we try. Alright, and then the last book that I also got for 10 cents at the library sale is The Season by Jonna Lisa Dreyer and Stephen Dreyer. And it sounds really cute. It's this little book. Alright, now let me tell you what it's about. A soccer star with Olympic dreams, Megan can't believe her Southern Belle mother secretly entered her and her twin in the Dallas patient season. Her attitude gets her on a debate night probation. She's got a month to prove she can be a proper Texas lady or she'll get the boot and disgrace her family. Trading her, cheat, cleat, trading her cleats for the kitten heels, Megan waltz into a full schedule of dazzling extravagance parties when she's swept off her feet by the charming Hank Waterhouse. She starts to think being a Deb might not be so bad if only she didn't have to contend with a backstabbing blonde and her billionaire boyfriend. But that's before Megan finds herself in the middle of a media frenzy causing scandal, being humiliated in front of a dozen 10 year olds and getting punched in the face by another girl. The season has begun and the drama is just getting started. Like, it sounds really good and honestly we're here for it. Alright, now these next two books I'm going to talk about are, or sorry, these next three books, I forgot there was a book behind me, but these are new releases that came out this month and I had to have and I finally got around to it, I'm so excited, I don't know when I'll actually read it, but I'm hoping sometime soon, and that is Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera, and just like, Oh, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Just look at that. Ooh! One brother is the chosen one. The other has to make a choice. Mm. Who will live forever and who will die trying? Like, have you seen the trailer for Infinity Sun? It's just like... It's good. Ever since they were young, brothers Emil and Brayton have... Dissolved the Spell Walkers, a violent group sworn to protect the world from specters. While the Spell Walkers and the other Celestials were born with supernatural powers, specters take them, violently stealing the incense of endangered magical creatures. A gang of specters is growing bolder by the day, and they fear. And the fear they show is making it harder for anyone with powers to live peaceably and openly in the world. Shortly after their 18th birthday, Emil and Brayton are attacked by a specter, and in trying to defend his brother, Emil manifests a power that shouldn't be possible. Phoenix Fire, a power that only a specter could have. Convinced that he is the key to finally ending the war, the Spellwalkers want Emil to join their ranks and they're willing to take Brayton 
to if that's Emil's condition. For Brennington, even if he's powerless, the change to fight the specters with his heroes is a dream come true. For Emil, the constant fighting and the painful new power is a waking nightmare. Much as they hate to admit it, the brothers are faced with an undeniable fact. One of them has what it takes to be a hero, but it's not the one who desperately wants it. And that is Infinity Sign, and like I said, it sounds so good. The trailer for it is really good. And just like that, Clovo, ooh, we like a shiny book. Mm. We like shiny things. Alright, the next book I am going to talk a little bit about is A Heart So Fierce and Broken, which is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which I still need to finish. I'm like halfway through it. But this is a book too, and I don't want to read too much into it. But just like, it has artwork of Prince Wren and Harper. I almost forgot what her name was. At least I think that is Harper. And then I forget what his name is, but he's the guard that protects Wren. And then I'm not sure who she is, but she looks well. Maybe that one's Harper. I'm not sure, but it's somebody. Uh, and I just love that it has the artwork in it, and the cover is purple, like, what? And then, look at it naked, like, ooh, it's just, it's a gorgeous book, and I like that. I'll give a little bit into this, because I don't want to spoil it for me. Finally here win the crown. The curse is finally broken, but Prince Ren of Emberfall faces darker troubles still. Rumors circulate that he is not the true heir, and that forbidden magic has been unleashed in Emberfall. Although Ren has Prince Harper by his side, his guardsman's Grey- Oh, Grey, that's his name. Grey is missing, leaving more questions than answers. Win the crown, save the kingdom. Now, that's all I'm going to get into, into this one. I'm hoping that I like it. So, fingers crossed, because it's a very gorgeous book, like I said. And we do like shiny things, but I'm not even sorry. <laughs> Alright, and the next book I also picked up is the sequel to One of Us is Lying, and that would be one of us is next. Now, since I have the whole series, I can try to binge read them soon. Ugh. It's a new school year at Bayview, and no secrets is safe. What people are saying about the outbreak thriller of One of Us is lying. Ugh. Come on, Bayview, you know you've missed this. A ton of copycat gossip apps have popped up since Simon died, but in the years since the Bayview 4 were cleared of his shocking death, no one's been able to fill the gossip void quite like he could. The problem is no one has the facts until now. The time is not an app, though it's a game of truth or dare. Phoebe's the first target if you choose not to play. It's a truth. And hers is dark. Then comes Maeve, and she would know better always to choose the dare. By the time Knox is about to be tagged, things have gotten dangerous. The dares have become deadly, and if Maeve's learned anything, from Browen last year is that you can't count on the police for help or protection. Simon's gone, but someone's determined to keep his legacy at Bayview High alive. And this time, there's a whole new set of rules. 
mystery. Ooh. It sounds really good. <laughs> and then we have The Seven Blades in Black by Sam Skies that I plan to be reading next month in February and started halfway into it. It's really good so far. <clears throat> Her magic was stolen. She was left for dead. Betrayed by those she trusts most, and her magic ripped from her, Sal the Caliphy has nothing left but her name, her story, and the weapon she used to carve both. But she will know, but she has a will stronger than magic, and knows exactly where to go. The scar is a land torn between powerful empires, where a rough massages go to disappear, disgrace. Soldiers go to die, and Sal goes with a blade, a gun, and a list of seven names. It, it just sounds amazing. Not really digging the cover of it, but you know what? It, like I said, it sounds amazing, and we're going with that. Alright, and there you guys have it. That is my January book haul. And at the end of the video, my voice is kind of a little dry, I don't know what happened there, but, um, apparently that's what happens after you do a book haul, you talk about all these great amazing books that you got, got over the month in January, so, there's that. So, on that note, I hope you guys are having a good day or night, wherever you are in the world, and also, get unexpected reading in, because of course, you know, why not, and... If you guys are new here, go ahead and hit that subscription right down there in the notification bell so you'll get emailed anytime I post. And I will see you guys in a new one hopefully soon. Alright, goodbye!